Now we get to the more complex stuff. Now you especially want to pay attention to how these work. We have an assignment for you which works with doubly linked list. Um, so you have to pay attention to the techniques used to create these operations. So they want to remove something uh, from the list. So let's look at this is always useful if you draw a diagram of what things are like on the list before you remove something and after you remove something and why that's important. You can see before we start the head points to this list and we're actually removing this item here. So this is what the list will have to look like when we're all done. This item will be gone and you'll see this link here no longer points to the gone item. It has to point across to the item that uh, that the old item used to point to. So that kind of gives you a clue the operations you have to do. Uh, so basically you want to change this next to point to this uh, item that's the one that the item you're removing is next used to point to. So you're basically going to be assigning this next to what this next was. And that's how you actually remove something. So we're going to have a loop that's going to look for the item we're going to remove. So it's advancing current until it finds the item we want to remove. So once you have a pointer to current, now we can actually look at doing that. Uh, so, but we have one problem. We have to actually change this node back here. And once we advance to current here, we no longer have any reference to the previous node. So you're going to quickly find out that when you write this code, uh, where you have to modify something in the previous link because you're removing the one that you found, you have to remember this last one. So we're going to add a new variable. So we're going to add a previous. So we're going to have our code keep track of not just the current, which will be the code we've already looked at, but the previous one we looked at. So when we find current, we're going to have this previous, and then we can refer to previous.next uh, and set it equal to current.next and that would effectively erase this node. And that's what we do here. So this is just searching for uh, data I matching item. So this is the same as the search. But once it finds it, instead of returning true, it sets uh, previous. It sets the next value of previous to the current. Oh, I should have said dot get next. And now that's gotten too big. Let me uh, decrease the font a little bit. Okay. And uh, so, and it's a long line. It should really be indented. So you can see that's caused some problems here. So I'm going to see if I can fix that up. Yeah. Some of these on my slides are problems because I use previous.next instead of set next, which is a lot shorter code, uh, so you can access things. So uh, this gets the next value of current and then sets next for previous to that. And then after it's done that, it can just return. It's all done. It's deleted the item. Now, uh, then it gets, uh, here's how it remembers previous. So before it gets the next, in other words, before it changes current, it remembers current into the previous variable, and then it gets current pointing to the next node. So when it comes back on the loop here, previous will always point to the previous node uh, to what current is. Okay, here's remove. There is a problem. Uh, what if this is the first item in the list? Suppose you match the first item in the list. Well, let's look at the problem here. What happens if you're, it's the first item in the list you're deleting? Uh, so uh, current will point to the head, and head will point to that item that we're going to delete. So current is OK, but previous is set to none. So while current is not equal to none, it says, OK, uh, the current isn't none. It points to something. So you get the data, and it matches what we want to delete. So then it says, uh, oh, we don't have, let's just fix this to the other code. I'm just going to refer to next directly. That's what I had originally. And then it's not a method. OK, there we go. So it sets the next of previous to current. But there's a problem. This will actually give you an error because previous is none. It doesn't point to anything. There is no previous to the first item. So this is the special cases I was talking about. and. Uh, so 
when you have that, when previous doesn't point to anything, in this case we need to change the self.head to point to the next node. So previous is like the self.head is what we need to change. So we have to put a special case in. We have to actually test for it. So when we match our data, we check is previous equal to none. If it is, we set the head of, of the, of the uh, whole list to current, else we do what we were doing before. And let me fix that up as well. Next is equal to current. There we go. And uh, that's it. All right. So now let's. Uh, so special cases, and this is especially going to be true of the homework. Uh, special cases often arise in algorithms when you work with a list of things or structures where you're at the beginning or the end or there's nothing in the structure. Uh, so those are always special cases. There's two things you should do. Uh, you should always think about the special case if your code will work in that case. And then you also should test your code if it actually works for those, te those cases. So for example, when I wor work on tests that test your code, I always will test the case where there's no list. Uh, there's only, maybe only one item in the list. Sometimes that's a special case. And I'll also check if you're deleting or doing something with the beginning or the end of a sequence as a special case. Okay, the last part is an ordered list. Now the only difference between an unordered and an ordered is whether it's sorted or not. That's uh, when you read this, you're not clear exactly what is ordered and unordered. Uh, but it actually it has to do with whether the items in the list are in a numerical special order, either numerically or alphabetically. And so uh, we can use almost everything we've done all right will work fine, because once you put things in the list, if it's sorted, deleting them out of the list or counting them will not change the order, uh, because it re remember the list retains the order once you put it in. So it's inserting into the list that we really have to be concerned with getting in the right order. And the idea is here is we have a list and we want to insert a number like 11. Uh, we basically just have to find where does it go. We, we search, you see the list is all already all sorted from smallest to largest. So you can see it would go after the 7 and before the 15. So it gets inserted here. So the trick is we want to search for this node that uh, is the one we want to insert it uh, before, and but well, we also want to reference the one before it. So these nodes it goes between, we have to change this link, and we're going to have to change the link of the node we're inserting the point here, uh, so we need a reference to both of these. So first thing is we're going to have a, a search which finds uh, uh, previous and current, so this will be exactly the same as if we were deleting that node we're finding current, but we're going to be inserting something in front of it. So it finds the first node that is bigger than 11. So we're inserting 11. The 15 would be the first node that's bigger. So we want to stop where current points to the first node that meets that condition. Now once we've done that, we're going to erase this next for a previous next will be erased. And then the new nodes next will be set to what it used to point to. And that does it. That will uh, insert the new node. So here's the code, and it's a bit longer. Uh, so there's also a special case here. Uh, so let's see if we can look at the code here. So I called it add order in order, because uh, I actually added it to the original unordered list class to test it rather than copying the whole class and leaving everything else the same. So I can, I can either insert into a list sorted or uh, I can insert by just doing add. Uh, there's a caveat about doing that. I just did it because it was easy. Uh, but the problem is if someone does the other add to add a bunch of items and they're not in sorted order, the list is, quote, broken in terms of it's not an ordered list. Once it's not an ordered list, you're, this method will not work. It assumes that the list has previously been ordered. OK. So we have, this looks very much like we're going to delete something, except here we create a brand new node with our item. So we're going to insert that later. Uh, the author actually does this after the loop finishes. Uh, you can do it either place. Then we have a special variable to, to indicate when we want to stop. And this actually simplifies the code a bit. 
So while current is not equal to none, we've done that before, and not stop. So we have two conditions that we might stop on. It turns out one of them is we found the item, which is the not stop, and one of them is we reached the end of the list. So if uh, the current data is greater than item, that's the condition we're looking for, we set stop equal to true. Else, uh, we set previous to current to remember our previous value, and then we set current to the next value. Okay, now when this loop is all done, we get to here. We've actually arrived here in two kind of two different cases. One is there was nothing on the list. Uh, so we're actually inserting on an empty list, and in which case previous will be none. And the, the other case is uh, normal, where we found the thing that has, where previous actually points to something. So we found something on the list. So and it turns out, okay, so if previous is none, we're, we either have one item on the list or no items on the list. And it turns out this code works in either case. We set the new node to whatever uh, self-head is. So if self-head actually points to something, that means that we were inserting before the first item. If self-head is none, we're actually inserting into an empty list. But either way, this will set the right pointer for the new node. And then finally, we set the head to point to the new node. So that inserts into the first position. So in this case, uh, in the normal case, current is pointing to after we want to insert it. So we set the new node to point to current, being the next node it's going to be inserted uh, before. And then the previous node, we set its next to point to the new node. So that will create the links to insert this new thing in. Now the big O of list, uh, every method on the list that does traversal has to go from zero to n steps. So automatically all those methods are basically O of n. And here's a list of all of them, uh, getting the length. Now there is a shortcut in the length. You can add an extra instance variable to the unordered list uh, um, object that keeps track of the length. And every time you add something, you increment it by one. And every time you, time you remove something, you subtract one. And that's a that adds a little bit of cost to uh, inserting and taking out things in the list, but it gives you the advantage that every time you ask for the length, you don't have to traverse the list. So length would go from O of n to O of, of 1, a constant time. Uh, so that's an improvement you can do on this structure. Uh, we have remove, append, pop from a certain index, because you have to find the index. Search, uh, index are both search operations. Uh, insert, you have to find that item. Uh, pop from the end of the list, you have to go all the way to the end of the list. And pop from an arbitrary place in the middle uh, is also O of n if, as long as i is random between 0 and n. And so that's it. One more thing, uh, this has to do with your homework assignment. So this is the picture of a doubly linked list. It's just like a linked list, but you can traverse it from either the rear because it has links that always point to the previous value, and from the front. You can see one advantage is that when you traverse coming from the front, you don't have to remember the previous value. You have a pointer to it in the node you find. So that's an advantage. But if you insert or delete, you may have to, you have to change all these nodes, uh, twice as many nodes, to, in, to put something in or remove it. Uh, so here's the actual definition of the node for a, a doubly linked list. So we have a next and we also have a previous pointer. And so here's a picture of it. The first item's previous points to none and the last item's previous points to none. There's one more special case when you consider this. There's if you uh, only have one item in the list, when you have no items on the list, and whether you're doing something at the beginning or the end of the list. So those are uh, several different cases you have to consider that you've, you've test for all those. But again, I'll do them. You have to test for if you have an empty list. Do, does your operation work? Test if uh, your operation is affecting the first item in the list, or if it's affecting the last item in the list. Does your operation work? And then finally, test if your list works when there's only one item on the list. And that turns out to be a special case. Uh, so good luck with the homework, and uh, we'll see you later.